Hello, this is Mr. Huff, and let's talk about the moment of inertia and finding deflection and modulus of elasticity. All right, let's start with the definition of moment of inertia. It's the physical quantity which describes how easily a body can be rotated about a given axis. It is a rotational analog of mass which describes an object's resistance to translational motion. Inertia is a property of matter which resists change in its state of motion. So what I want you to picture in your head is a analog clock face that has the big hand and the little hand. Now, magnify that, make that a giant clock, and one of the hands is made out of an eight foot long two before. And that's what we're talking about we're talking about that shape rotating about an axis. That's what the moment of inertia is about. Let's take a look at the formula. So in the uh, engineering curriculum you have access to a formula page and this is the calculation for the moment of inertia. And this only works for a rectangular prism. If it's another shape you have to step up your math game a lot in some cases. There are some formulas out there for different cross-sectional areas. So imagine looking down the end of a 2x4 here. So you can see the base of the 2x4 and the height of the 2x4. Uh, this orientation would be called joist because the base is narrow and the height is um, longer. If you rotate this 90 degrees it would be called plank because the base would be wider than the height. Okay, so our moment of inertia, and we're only looking at rotation in the x-axis, uh, is the base times the height cubed divided by 12. All right. So let's go do a sample calculation like that. So here would be a calculation for a 2 before in plank orientation. So the base is 4 inches wide and the height is 2. Okay. So we get a value of 2.66 or 2.667. Rounding, you can if you want. I don't really care. Just give me about three or four important numbers. Uh, this would be in quartic inches. It's inches to the fourth power. Let's look at it if it were in the other orientation, if it's in joist. So we're going to get this calculation. And we get a much higher number. So 10.667 or 10.67 or 10.66 however you want to do it and again it's in quartic inches or inches to the fourth power uh, you can see that just changing the orientation increased the moment of inertia substantially so one of the things I want to point out I'm seeing some errors in calculation because you guys are not using um, parentheses and it depends on the calculator. Some of them are better at guessing what you mean than others, and some, uh, yeah. So I, my recommendation is this. Use um, parentheses to separate and use the asterisk for multiply when you're putting stuff in for uh, on a calculator. Don't use parentheses to multiply. Even though it works, avoid it because it's going to lead to confusion and get you to the wrong answers. And I have a better demonstration of this in just a moment, OK? So now that we understand or we have looked at the moment of inertia based on that rectangle shape, let's take a look at beam deflection. All right, this is from the PLTW notes, and I'm annoyed because it doesn't match the formulas they give you on the formula chart. On the formula chart, they replace the force with P for point load, which is also a force. So uh, just recognize that F or P, they mean the load in the center of the beam. Okay, so this is telling us delta max, which is the deflection, how far it bends. So if you put a force on the middle of beam B, how far does it move down based on these criteria, the force being applied, the length between the supports, not the length of the beam, the length between the supports, and then you cube that divided by 48 times the modulus of elasticity, which is pounds per square inch. Uh, these are typically very high numbers and I moment of inertia which we just calculated okay and we can see moment of inertia right here so that's what uh, that's that formula now one of the things you uh, will see is sometimes you use all of this data to calculate the modulus of elasticity so you use algebra to move E over here 
and divide both sides by delta max so in that it ends up over here so I'm gonna use a D or Delta to describe that so let's take a look at what that formula might look like so this formula here shows that it's force times the length cubed divided by put a parenthesis in the right place a 48 times I times Delta and so in this case let's say we have a 100 pound force the supports are 96 inches apart we're gonna divide that by 48 times 10.67 which is our moment of inertia we just calculated and let's say that this beam moved a quarter of an inch all right so we're gonna take this and let's go calculate that BAM okay 6.909 times 10 to the fifth so what that would be is 690900 okay so 600,000 or 6 190,900 PSI, all right? Uh, let me demonstrate what I mean about the parentheses. If you strip the parentheses off of that equation, it's going to default to order of operations and do some multiplication and division out of order, and you're going to get a bizarre number like this. So our number jumped from 690,000 to 4.9 million and that's a problem <clears throat> so that's the new number same numbers but without those parentheses you get a very different answer so make sure you're using the parentheses to force your calculator to follow the order of operations that you demand okay so uh, this will support you in the practice problems I'm going to give you so I expect you to, on paper, write down what is given. So you list what the problem states. So in this case, we have uh, that the base is 2 inches and the height is 4 inches, that the unknown is the moment of inertia in quartic inches. The reason I have you do this, this is really important, because a lot of times by the time you finish your calculation, you forget what you're looking for, and you get the wrong units on it. And just like in science class in engineering, measurement and units are the key to success. All right. Show the equation, and I'm just showing this in a text format. I would expect this to be written on paper. So the moment of inertia is base times height cubed divided by 12. And so here's our substitution, replacing the base with the number 2, the height with the number 4, and completing the calculation to get a moment of inertia of 10.67 quartic inches. So this is the what I would ex expect you to show with your work. Um, the problem is that a lot of you just kind of jump in and start throwing numbers in the calculator, and you get to things that uh, are not correct, especially when you're calculating the modulus of elasticity. Remember, use parentheses to help you get your job done.